My name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this latest Chassis Sim tutorial, what I'd like to talk to you about is creating tyre models with no tyre test rig data. What is becoming increasingly obvious in the modern motorsport environment, particularly for professional and semi-professional um, uh, formula, is that simulation is no longer just a nice tool to have. Because of the limited testing you now have, it's now an extremely necessary one. Yet, one of the biggest bugbears I see when people get really nervous about using simulation data is when they don't have tire test rig data. Well, I'm going to show you some techniques in this tutorial that you can use to get around this. And once you understand this, the fact that if you don't have tire test rig data is not going to be a showstopper. So, let's get started. To set the scene, what I'm going to show you is the end result of using the Chassis Sim Tire Force Modeling Toolbox. So what we've got here is that we've got a comparison of actual versus simulated data. We've got speed, throttle, front dampers, rear dampers, steer, lateral and inline G, front and rear roll. Actual is coloured, simulated is black. Now to put this in perspective, the tyre model that was used for this particular car the actual tyre itself had never seen a tyre test rig. So really, I want to really make that point really, really clear. Now, what we're going to talk to you about today is not necessarily how you get it down to that sort of level of correlation. What I want to talk to you about is how to get going, because one of the keys for simulation is to get going. So, here's the crux of our technique. You select a, a car template that most closely resembles your car. You enter the setup, and you create the monster file. You create the circuit model. You then use your group factors to dial in the correlation to about one to two seconds, and then you use the tire force modeling toolbox to handle the rest. It's that simple. So, let's get started. So what I've done here, to save a little bit of time, I've loaded in the, um, Dela uh, I've loaded in the example of the chassis sim tutorial, so I've already entered in um, uh, the setup. I've also gone through, using the monster file, I've created a circuit model for this um, particular from uh, the monster file. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to reset these, um, uh, I'm just going to reset these grip factors to what they would have been in the standard model. And so what I'm going to do now, now that I've got this, I'm going to run a simulation. Now usually I would set up a data log for this, but given the fact I just want to illustrate the technique to you, we're just going to skip that bit for the time being. So I'm going to start up the simulation. Okay, so we've now got our initial lap time of a 93.2 seconds. So the next point in the technique is what we're now going to do is because the actual lap time was a 90.9 .9 seconds, what we now need to do is we need to up the grip factors a little bit. So what we're going to do, click on the front tires, we'll change it from 0.9 to 1, and we'll change the rear from 1 to 1.1. So we're increasing the, the grip factor by 10%. So what we'll now do is we'll re-simulate that. Okay, we're just about getting to the end of that simulation, and now we've got a 90.97 second lap. Okay, so what we now need to do, even though the lap time is very, very close to what we started with, the next step in the process is, is to use the chassis and tire force modeling toolbox. The reason we're going to need to do that is there'll probably be some sections we're really good in, but there'll also be some of other sections we're not so good in. And the reason we're going to use the tire force modeling toolbox is that actually will fill in the correct shape of what the tire model needs to look like. So to do that, we we'll go to tire force modeling, tire force modeling advanced. Now here's the trick. We're just going to be doing tire loads only, so we're only doing the traction circle radius versus load characteristic, because that's pretty much the fundamental underpinning of any solid tire model. So what we're going to do, we're going to click here to import our monster file, set up the sign of our lateral acceleration and your sign of the steering, which I go into in further depth in other chassis sim tutorials. I'll click on one for that. And now what's going to happen is we're now going to do a whole bunch of track replays to minimize the error between actual G and simulated G. And when it's done, so at this point you walk away for a little bit, and when you come back, you'll have something that looks like this. So to import those results, all you've got to do is click on the front tires, go to import v3 ASCII to uh, file, file, and this is the optimized front tire force file, and click on OK. And 
We click here for the, uh, for on the rear for um, our rear result. Click on OK and click on OK again. And that's it. That's our technique. That is how you create a tyre model using no tyre test rig data. So just to summarise again the technique, you select a car template that most closely resembles your car. You enter your setup and you create the monster file. You create the circuit model. You use the grid factors to dial in your correlation to win, say, one to two seconds um, of the actual lap time. And then you use the tire force modeling toolbox to handle the rest. And when you are done, you're going to have something that looks like this. Actual is colored, simulated is black. Now, this is not perfect. It's not designed to be perfect. But what we've got here is that we've got speed, s throttle, steer, front dampers, rear dampers, and your lateral and your inline G. While this is pretty good, it's not perfect, but here's the thing. It will get you going, and that is absolutely and utterly key. Because in further tutorials, I will go through and I will show you how you can knock off, how you can use the rest of the chassis and tire force modeling toolbox to remove those errors. But look, don't take my word for it. If you're not an existing member of the chassis sim community, go to our online simulation, the, the chassis sim, and download the chassis sim online. The chassis sim tutorial is there, so play with it. But the key thing is, is that what this shows conclusively is that you've now got a tool that you can start to use some basic setup work for. And more importantly, though, it lays the foundation to get correlation like this. Now, one disclaimer here, well, not really a disclaimer, but a note. Let's just say if you do have tire test rig data, of course, you'd be silly not to use it. However, the real power of this is that you can get going without it. And here's the key thing to simulation. The key is to get going, because once you get going, that's when you can start to get, um, and you start overlaying actual to simulated data, you get a much better idea of what the car is doing. So. On that note, we'll conclude this particular tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Chassis Sim tutorial.